Pox Nora is a strategy card game that has been around for a while now and it's making its way to console. The game is currently in closed beta on PS4 and will be one of the first CCGs to offer cross-platform play. While the idea of a pre-established CCG coming to console with full cross-platform play sounds like a great hand, the gameplay and presentation leave me looking for a mulligan. I'm Colton from MMOHeads.com and here's our first look at Pox Nora. I want to start this off by saying that the PS4 iteration of the game is my first exposure to Pox Nora. I've already raved on this channel about how much I love the concept of a hybrid strategy RPG card game, just check out my Duelist video. So naturally, when I was presented the opportunity to check this one out, I leapt at it. Pox Nora attempts to take the Magic the Gathering style card game to its next logical step, tabletop war game style play. Players are given a base and generate Nora, the game's resource, each turn. You spend it to play creatures, cast spells, and equipment for your units. Like in Duelist, there are fonts on the map that you can capture which up your resource generation giving you an advantage. Unlike Duelist, creatures have more than a few stats and multiple keywords that grant them additional powers. There are several maps, each with terrain that changes how creatures perform much like in Yu-Gi-Oh with field cards. This can create some interesting matchups and turn what was, on paper, a one-sided matchup completely on its head. This works to the game's favor most of the time. Honestly, there are a lot of systems at work in the game and it can be a lot to take in. This is the first place where the game really suffers. The tutorials included are severely lacking. They teach you the absolute most basic things about the game, but fail to cover things like keywords or terrain effects. Compare this to games like Magic Duel of the Planeswalkers, which takes time to explain the steps of the game as well as every facet of the cards included in the demo so you understand the basics well enough to branch out. This game fails to completely build that knowledge base before setting you loose on the rest of the game. This kind of problem is exacerbated by the dreadful user interface. I can see this layout working really well on PC, as you'd have a mouse to quickly navigate the screen with. On the PS4, however, it's clunky and slow. Cycling around the map is dreadful, made even worse by the isometric camera view, and sometimes the elements of the UI will stop working altogether. I had a few moments in matches I played where I had resources but couldn't play a creature, couldn't move any of my units, and couldn't even end my turn. It was like the game had frozen. I had to go back to the home screen and force close the application to get it running again. This made playing matches against opponents who already had a massive card advantage go from a mild frustration to a raging inferno. Thankfully, there are a lot of single-player campaign missions to play that offer a decent challenge and serve as a way to generate gold and unlock things. Each match of the game, especially where the campaign is concerned, feels like a mission straight out of an RTS like Warcraft 3. This certainly isn't a bad thing and despite the bland and dated visuals, offers a good deal of fun. This is where the second falling off point for the game is and it ties into the biggest drawback of them all. This game has a ton of paywalls. A bunch of the game's campaigns must be purchased. That in and of itself isn't a huge problem. A developer wanting to make money for something they've created is perfectly fine. When you get into playing PvP or trying to clear campaigns on hard is where the wheels fly off the car and take out a toddler in the second row of the stands. Building a deck that is even remotely competitive in PvP is going to cost some serious cash. The best way to get rare cards is to buy packs. You can buy them in singles, which will cost you about $2 a pack, or you can buy them in sets of 10 and up your chances of getting more powerful stuff for a good bit more. Some of these boxes cost as much as $17. When you factor in that you only have a 5% chance to get something better than rare, and there are two rarities higher than just plain old rare, it'll be quite some time before you have something viable. And believe me, you'll need those legendary and exotic cards to be viable. Now I'm all for cutting slack where it's due. Part of this isn't the game's fault. It's been around for a long time now and had several expansions. This is what happens when CCGs age. The longer a game has been around, the more money it costs to be competitive in. It happened with Magic, it happened with Yu-Gi-Oh, it happens with digital card games like Hearthstone. It's unavoidable. What is avoidable is making the grind to get cards take forever. Packs cost in the thousands of gold if you don't want to spend real cash, and you get about 50 to 75 gold per match. Considering each match takes 15 to 20 minutes or more, you're going to be there for a while. The game isn't all bad though. When it works, it's fun and has a ton of depth to it. It even offers cross-platform play like I mentioned in the intro. 
One of my favorite things about this is if you're someone who spent a lot of money or time on the PC version, you can move your PC account over to the PSN so you can pick up on console right where you left off on PC and continue without losing a single thing. My hat's off to Desert Owl for that, as it's something you don't see super often in a world where free-to-play PC games are turning up on console more and more frequently. All in all, Pox Nora is a great idea on paper that suffers from a ton of paywalls, an old and somewhat bland aesthetic, and a user interface that seriously got lost in translation. If you're looking for a strategy card game, you might want to skip this one and check out Duelist instead. Well, that's all for today. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and keep it locked on MMOHuts.com for all the latest gaming news and reviews.